Welcome again to our little Bible reflection. It's good to have you on board again and watching our YouTube channel. I suppose you had a lot of luck yesterday. I backed a horse at 20 to 1 and unfortunately it was still running at 20 to 4. So I didn't have a lot of luck. Never mind. And the other thing I hope that as we can't really do much for the people of Gaza or the Palestinians or the Jews in this situation, we can pray for them. We can pray for them. We can be in solidarity with them and hope and pray that they will come to some resolution of this impossible situation. Thanks. Today's text is a, a different one. Jesus starts off by saying, if you want to be my disciple, you must first love less your family and friends and all those things that you love and depend on, whether it be success or home or comfort or applause or health or whatever it might be. But if you don't love those less, you can't be my disciple. You must do that and your own life, then take up your cross and follow me. And then Jesus goes on to give two parables, one of someone building a tower. And Jesus asks, if he's not able to finish, he shouldn't start. Alternatively, a king going to war with a small army should first sue for peace before engaging in battle with someone with a large army. And what Jesus is saying, I think, is if you want to come and follow me, you must be free to do so. Free. Free from all those attachments, dependencies and stuff that we have. I was inclined then to look at how free was Jesus? And several instances came to mind that show his incredible freedom. The first one was his freedom to listen. And I suppose this is because of the synodal process that we're in at the moment, where we are encouraged to listen. And Jesus was a great listener. And not only that, but he heard as well what he listened to. And one of the beautiful ones was with the Syrophoenician woman who begged him to heal her daughter. And Jesus responded by saying, <clears throat> sorry, but my mission is only to the Jew, Jewish people. And she pleads with him quite cleverly and he listens to her and he hears her and he heals her daughter. And another one was Bartimaeus, the blind man who was brought to Jesus. And Jesus says to him rather beautifully, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man says that I might see again. And Jesus heals him. So he had that beautiful freedom. He wasn't bringing his own agenda. And the second one was, Jesus said quite publicly, I have come not to be served, but to serve. In other words, to give without condition. To give without demanding response or payback. Jesus came to serve, and probably no example better than the Last Supper, where he, the Lord and Master, washed the feet of his disciples, saying explicitly, I have given you an example. They also, and we also, are called to serve, and to have that freedom to be able to serve as Jesus did. And that third one was his inclusion. Jesus included everyone. He had a whole mission of inclusion and lived in a society that was very elitist, legalistic and exclusive. But Jesus shared table with everyone. And in that culture, that was quite something because in that culture, you only shared a table with those of whom you approved. You didn't share with just anyone. 
that Jesus did. He welcomed everybody to his table and he would sit down at the table with anyone and share it. And a beautiful one of that is when he was in the house of Simon the Pharisee and a prostitute came in and sat at his feet and wept, washed his feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. And he allowed that. He was comfortable with that. Even though everyone around the table was appalled or scandalized. But Jesus was free. And his concern was not for his own credibility, but for the good of the woman. And the final one I'd mention today is the law. Jesus lived in a society which was very legalistic, a religion especially. And Jesus was free before the law. The number of times he had the freedom of, of understanding or perception. He could heal people, even though it was against the letter of the law. The number of times we have in the Gospels where Jesus healed on the Sabbath. Yeah. He set people free because he was free. He healed the woman with the curved spine. He healed the man with the um, withered hand on the Sabbath, in the synagogue, because his priority was the good of those people. Another one was when he would touch a leper to heal him. And this was against the law too. But Jesus was free. And I was asking, how come he could have such freedom? And I'm pretty sure it's because of his relationship with his father. Jesus depended on, loved, served, followed his father 100%. And that left him free. It didn't bind him, didn't restrict him, it left him free. And that's what I hope for us, that we also in these days can have freedom for, freedom to, not just freedom from. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.